So I want to show everybody out there what a true music legend looks like. I want you to zoom in. Will you guys show the bling right now? <laughs> Somebody zoom in on some of that bling right there. Because all these guys, these hip hop guys, everybody, oh my this and my that. <laughs> My man Arrow rocks in here and just says, boom, right? I mean, look, come on, did somebody zoom in on that? Because that, that is blowing my mind right there. Diamonds and gold. That's so, that's so, that's so like, right on. love and hate. I got them both for you. What do you want? I love that. Would it be fair to say you're a Canadian icon, Canadian legend? I think it'd be fair to say. I would think just, so. Just That's from, what I would say. Just from being around long enough. I that, mean, enough. you do enough decades and pack them all together you, with, with you stuff, get, then yeah, you yeah. You get the honorary, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Now, you know, well, no, it, I think it takes more than that. It takes more than hanging around. And it takes more, I think, than making just big records that are popular. I think it takes uh, doing things for your community, helping other people, inspiring other people, which you do. You, uh, you give a lot back, right? You, you develop young artists, you... I think, yeah, the offstage performance uh, is always, uh, you know, I mean, probably 80% of uh, the character that you're marketing, so it's really, really important what you do uh, when you're not playing music, so... I love that. I've never heard anybody say that your offstage performance <laughs> has to outshine your onstage performance. Absolutely. That's, yeah. that's amazing. That's, that's... <laughs> Last night you got a, it was a Lifetime Achievement Award, right? That's correct. Uh, I, my first thoughts on that whole thing is uh, I'm not done yet. Right. You know, I've got, I'm got a whole bunch of projects in, uh, on the go, and I've got a brand new record. I've got, written brand new songs, a yeah. whole rash of uh, 14 new songs. As you are reinvigorated, re-inspired. Oh, yeah. And it uh, went through a, a tragic year, and uh, the year lapsed, and uh, it's time to move on. So you, you, you took your year to heal. It's correct. Heal your soul, heal your, your body, heal. And during that time, probably a lot of stuff, during that time of being there, I bet your mind just fills up with finally new ideas. And yeah, uh, a lot of it's just survival mode. And, yeah. You know, stay out of depression and, um, and get up and do simple things that, uh, that, that get you going. And then um, finally this Ali Fontaine project came up and uh, I listened to her writing and I became really inspired. I, I got up out of that whole, uh, you know, uh, depression coming on and mm. uh, ran from it like I was running from hell. And, right, right, right. and Ali was the perfect thing. And then after that, I started writing. And then now we're both kind of, we'll be uh, up against each other for some of the award shows coming up in 2012. <laughs> yeah, right? Isn't that like, right now you're best friends, but pretty soon you're going to be all, all catty to each other because <laughs> you won one and she didn't and vice versa. <laughs> I said, yeah. I said, we're going to hold hands, <laughs> and we're going to hope for the best, and it doesn't matter who wins, we all win. You'll be like, no, I want you to win. No, I don't. I really want to win. <laughs> <laughs> During the early days, when did the first song come out? Did I, was it 1980, you said? Uh, 1980 was the first uh, big song. We were traveling already. Since the 70s. 75, right? yeah. I mean, you used to have that look, I remember that hat. And all. You looked like a bit of an outlaw. Was it like yeah. a, it, it, also, you know, Michelle Thrush, I told you, she was sitting with me last night at the awards, and Michelle, she was squealing like a five-year-old. Yeah. Oh, I just love him. Oh, and I hear it, and you start singing his voice. It just brings back memories. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and uh, then she said, it used to be the coolest thing in the world is to go into, you, you used to have like your own Jimmy Buffett-style restaurants, like the seaweed restaurants. Yeah, seaweed, seaweed cabarets, yeah. And, and it was like, were you the first guy with your own uh, like uh, line of uh, no, hard rock cafes before there were hard rock cafes, maybe? <laughs> or, you know what I mean? It was fun times. We had a club in Winnipeg and Thunder Bay. and just like your own Margaritaville, right? Or Edmonton, like yeah, yeah. We just uh, set it up and we got um, the young uh, aspiring artists that didn't have any stage to play, so we gave them a place to play. It was fun. It was just developing talent. Managing yourself then too? Pretty much manage myself most. Uh, you know, 
I came very close to signing um, a deal that would have probably taken Seaweed Band to another level. I didn't, uh, I shied away from fame. I, I, you know, I looked at the price of fame and I want to walk in Safeway and push a cart and I don't want to be, yeah. you know, I, yeah. Yeah, I, I, got a, I got a good level of fame. Uh, you know, I've, I've had a comfortable living mm. and uh, I think... Uh, well respected too, yeah, which is important. Exactly. So I really didn't want the big pop star idol kind of fame. Yeah. I wanted to be a little bit anonymous and be able to, uh, you know, just be hang out in the street. And the, and the black cowboy hat and the black leather jacket and the snakeskin boots, when I took them off I thought I could walk into a crowd and disappear. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a pretty good way of putting it. I can completely understand that. And I think you have a longer career that way because people don't get sick of you being around so much as well. I think so, yeah. Especially nowadays, you get so much, uh, you're so blasted everywhere so fast and then people are like, get him out of my face. <laughs> you know, <laughs> now you have a, you're like the elder statesman and people respect you, you walk in a room. Um, um, I was even a little nervous when I saw you though yesterday. I was like, hmm, was, he looks like he could be a mean guy. I better not say hi. What if he says, <laughs> hits me with that cane? I don't yeah. know about that. Reality ain't around to protect me right now, so I don't know what to do. You know, you just never know, right? So you you have a you have a sense of a, a bit of danger, and I think every great rock star, every great pop star, or even every great real star, Clint Eastwood or anyone, has to have a a sense of danger, but also a sense of comforting once you get past that sense of danger, which you have. You have that outlaw sort of, uh, but I help people, <laughs> but I might still kill you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>